Hi. Helming in Sea of Thieves is probably the least popular job in the game. Reason being, most people who engage in PvP want to be the guy who shoots the cannons, goes for boards, and kills the other crew. They want to have as much action as possible, and don't want to have the responsibility of staying on the wheel. Because of this, most people who end up helming aren't doing so because they're good at it, they're doing it because it's the only job left. Unfortunately, what this means is that since most people are forced to take the wheel, they have to learn everything from scratch. And since the only quote-unquote helm guides are mostly for solo sloopers, there ends up being a lack of information and communication on what constitutes a good helm. I hope to change this, and this video will include helming tips for sloop, brigantine, and galleon, as well as beginner and advanced helming strategies and tips in order to give you the tools you need in order to get better at the game. So without further ado, here's part one of my four-part series on the different roles of a ship, starting with the helmsman. Now I firmly believe that in order to get better at something, you first need to find out what your job is. Why is there a helm role in the first place? Why do you need someone to be the helmsman? What's the point of having a helm? There are plenty of different answers to these questions. However, the most basic one that's true for all ship types and skill levels is that the helm's job first and foremost is to make sure that your teammates always have an angle to shoot the other ship. The whole reason why you have a helm in the first place rather than having everyone switch on and off to turn the wheel whenever it's needed, is to make sure that you don't lose angle and let the other crew pummel you with cannons without you having the ability to fire back. Now this is a very simple premise, yet so many people will just forget to turn the wheel and they'll end up losing angle, then immediately lose the fight because they didn't put any pressure onto the other boat when it mattered most. So make sure that above all else, you remember that your first priority as a helm is to make sure that your crew always has an angle to cannon the other ship Everything else I talk about in this video, while also important, is not as important as ensuring that you never let the other crew get an angle on you without you also having an angle on them. So now that we've talked about the entire reason for the helmsman role existing in the first place, we now need to talk about how to become a good helm. The first thing to talk about is how to give your cannoneers as easy of shots as possible. If you're on a sloop or brigantine and your ship is fully raised, then the waves are going to be atrocious. Make sure that you're always moving ever so slightly in order to counteract the waves and give your crewmates easier shots. Another thing you can try to do is fight near islands or shipwrecks. If your boat is parked next to an island or shipwreck, then the waves will be non-existent and you can stay full raised without the constant motion of the waves throwing your boat all around. Now that's a pretty basic tip. Let's go a bit more in depth. And in order to do that, we need to talk about advantages. In order to be a good helm, you need to know when you should be aggressive and pushing the other boat and trying to sink them, and when you should be more passive and stay far away until you're in a good enough position to start the assault. Now there are plenty of different advantages and weaknesses that you need to watch for before you decide whether or not to go in full force, but the most common and easily noticeable trait to watch for is the different ship types. If you're on a smaller ship fighting a bigger ship, then it is critical that you stay as far away from chain shot and boarding range as possible. If you go too close too early, then you will lose. They have more people, more cannons, more masts, and if they're on a galleon, they also have more decks than you do. So make sure that if you're on a smaller ship, that you stay far enough away from their boat so you always have the option of turning off and resetting the fight, and only get closer once you've gained the upper hand and can prevent them from utilizing their extra players, cannons, and mass superiority. On the flip side, if you're a bigger ship, then you already have a huge advantage going into the fight. You can take a lot more damage than they can, so be super aggressive and get as close as possible to them in order to prevent them from running away and resetting the fight. Now the big question, if you're on a smaller ship, then how do you actually figure out when you have the upper hand in the battle and it's time to get closer to finish the kill? It's very simple, you can get closer and finish the kill once you have prevented them from being able to utilize their cannon, mast, and player superiority. Now there are a couple different ways to shut down their advantages. The easiest way is just to use curse balls. If you have 10 peace balls, 10 anchor balls, and 10 jig balls, they won't be able to cannon you, snipe you, or escape from the fight. Curse balls are the easiest way to win a fight and are a necessity in order to beat an equally skilled crew when you're on the smaller ship. But not everyone has curse balls, or maybe you only have a barrel ball. In this case, we need to be a little more creative with how we can gain the upper hand. Another easy way that directly stops them from shooting cannons is to send it over a border and have them anchor the ship. This is exactly what I do in this fight. I send Melon over to try and drop their anchor, while keeping our boat at a safe distance where if Melon does die, I can always just turn away from the fight and wait for him to respawn. Luckily for me, the combination of firebombing their top deck 
plus the fact that I sent him for a board earlier than they were expecting allowed him to get a free board and drop their anchor. Melon eventually died, and this is the key moment that would decide the fight. When you're helming on a smaller ship, you should always be looking for an opportunity to get out of an enemy's broadside. Since they're anchored and can't turn, this gives me the chance to get behind them. Since their anchor is now up and we're about to go into their broadside, we need to find some way to keep them from getting on cannons. So I sent him for another board, since it worked so well last time. He got a nice deck land and redropped their anchor. I keep spiraling them and pumping in as many holes as possible in preparation for the ballast ball. My teammate stays alive by jumping in the water and not being overly aggressive. As long as he can stay alive, it'll keep them off the cannons because they'll have to constantly watch ladders. They do end up anchor balling me, but since Melon is still an annoying presence in the water, they can't capitalize on it. I then shoot a ballast ball and sleep ball, and they finally sink. Now even though this is a very specific situation, there are still things you can take away from this encounter. The first thing to remember is if you are fighting a bigger ship, you will never be able to win if you are equally skilled as players. Knowing this, you as a helm need to always be looking for a way to create an opening to force them off the cannons and to limit their advantages. Whether that be by using curse balls, sending borders, using island or fort cannons, or just staying far away from the fight until you have the upper hand. But above all else, you need to ensure that as a helm, you keep your ship out of harm's reach and stay in a spot where if things do go wrong, you can still escape. Whether it's because you lose the broad, your teammate gets one balled, or they start spamming curse balls, make sure that you don't go too close to the point that you lose immediately with no recourse. So now that we've talked about keeping angle and knowing when to close the distance and run away, the basics, let's talk about some more advanced things. Now like I said before, the whole reason why you're a helm in the first place is to make sure that you keep angle on the other ship. However, when you're on a sloop or brigand team, you have one extra job besides always keeping angle. You also become the bilge. Whenever you start taking holes, you as a helm are the one that needs to be bucketing and repairing, as well as always keeping angle. The reason as to why you as a helm also need to take on the role of the bilge is because your job as a helm is to make sure your teammates' lives are as easy as possible. They shouldn't have to worry about turning the wheel, bailing the boat, resurrecting teammates, etc. Your responsibility as a helm is to ensure that all your teammates have to worry about is shooting cannons. Now on a galleon it's a little different. You have someone who's a dedicated bilge, so you as a helm don't do it. This is specifically for sloop and brigantine. When you take a hole, you have to choose whether you're going down below deck for 4-10 to 10 seconds to repair the hole, or just do a quick bucket and come right back up. It's pretty simple to decide which option you're going to choose. As long as your boat is in a spin that will keep angle on the other ship, then you can stay below deck all you want. But if the other ship gets chain shotted, anchor balled, or they start turning off to try to escape from the fight, then you need to stay up top by the wheel in order to recorrect angle. Another thing you can do as Helm is to take some pop shots with your sniper. In the off chance that your sniper shot actually regs, it'll force the other crew off of cannons to heal. If they don't get off and heal, then they'll be killed by your teammates shooting cannonballs. This is another reason why the Eye of Reach is better than the pistol in most situations, but that's a video for another time. For now, just remember. Your first goal as Helm is to keep angle. This trumps any other responsibility. You need to be constantly looking to make sure that you're not moving so fast that you lose angle, as well as watching the other crew to make sure they're not full dropping or full raising their sails in order to get out of your broad. Your second job, on a sloop or brigantine, is to repair and bucket the boat in order to keep your teammates on cannons for as long as possible. And thirdly, take pop shots at the other crew and force them off the cannons to heal. And of course, always be looking for an opportunity to get out of the enemy's broadside. The only way that you can sink is if they put holes into you, and they can't do that if they don't have an angle to shoot you. So always be on the lookout for an opportunity to get around the enemy's boat, as this will make your life easier as a bilge since you'll no longer be taking holes, as well as making your cannoneer's life easier since they no longer have to dodge the one balls. Now all these strategies and knowledge that I've just given you is a good baseline in order to become a good helm. This is all the bare minimum, broad spectrum things that you need to know in order to be a decent helm. But the thing that separates decent helms from good helms is your communication. Telling your team which direction to shoot, when to shoot chain shots, go for boards, shoot curse balls, etc. You as a helm are in charge of when and where things are done, so make sure that you communicate to your teammates on what they should be doing. The obvious question now is, when do I know when to call for chain shots, boards, or curse balls? For chain shots, you mostly want to call for those whenever the other crew is not firing back at you and their sails are dropped. You want to wait for the other crew to stop shooting you, because you don't want your teammates to spend time demasting the other boat just to have them spam curse balls at you since you let up the cannon line pressure for 5 seconds. And you don't normally want to call for a demast when their sails are fully raised. Since it only takes 2 seconds to catch a fully raised sail, call for the demast when their sails are dropped. That way if they do decide to catch it, it'll take them way longer to catch than if it was just raised. As for curse balls, use them once you're in range to do so. Whoever shoots curse balls first wins the game. And sending borders is even easier. You always want to send borders when they're turning off to try and escape from the fight, and you won't be able to catch up to them. 
That way they can get on their boat, drop their anchor, and stop them from running away. But you can also send boarders once you've demasted and immobilized them, you need to finish the kill by preventing them from bucketing and repairing. The thing to remember about communication is that you as a helm have the overview. You can look at the other ship and see where their players are. You can see how many people are shooting cannons and how bad they're hurting based on the amount of people they have top deck. If your teammates are struggling to win the broad and you see that you have tons of holes, then make the call to peel off and reset the fight. If you wait too long, then you'll never be able to escape. But if you see that the other crew is struggling to win the broad and they only have one person top deck, and that's a sign that you need to lower sails and get closer before they decide to run away. It is critical that you understand what your responsibilities are as a helm. As you become more and more experienced with different situations, it'll come naturally to you as what you should be doing. But before that happens, you'll need to remember what your jobs are and find out the best way to accomplish those jobs. Number one, keep an angle at all times and giving your team first broad. Number two, keep your boat at a distance where you can always escape the fight if needed and getting closer to push the advantage. Number three, do everything in your power to keep your teammates on cannons for as long as possible. And number four, Communicate what your plans are to your crewmates, and tell them when to shoot chain shots and go for boards. These four things will be important in every fight you take, regardless of what the situation is. In my videos, I try to be as broad as possible with my teachings and knowledge, because I find the more wide I am with my tutorials, the easier it is for you to understand and digest. But now I'm going to go a bit more in depth, and give you some specifics on what to do in very nuanced situations. I've been playing in a competitive league called Legacy Brawl Hub. It's a Discord server that hosts slash ship standing five boat galleon scrimmages. Very fun. If you want to play in a more competitive environment than you'd find in regular adventure mode, I'd highly recommend joining this Discord. I'll put a link in the description. Anyways, during this time I found a lot of flaws in my helming, and I've gotten way better at learning to helm in a limited space with four other ships trying to kill me. One of the main things I've learned is strategies to get out of a pinch. One thing to remember about helming whenever you're fighting multiple ships is that it doesn't matter how perfect the situation is. You could have another ship completely demasted, they're quad bucketing, and you've anchored them. If another ship is rumbling in, you have to leave the situation. If you decide to stay, that's the second worst thing you can do as a helm. Because the other ship will park right in front of you, have first broad, break your wheel, mast, and pump you full of lowers. And you might not be even be able to secure the sink on the ship you were rolling in the first place. The best thing you can do if you see another ship rolling up, is to send boarders to secure the sink on the ship that's demasted, then immediately turn your ship off and escape from the situation before the other ship gets there. This will put your ship in a safe position. The other ship that was rolling in will be forced to target the demasted ship, since that's the only one left, and since you sent a bunch of boarders, they can hold it down until they sunk. Now the worst thing you can possibly do as a helm is put yourself in a pinch. If you're in between two different ships and they're both firing at you, you will sink. The reason why being in a pinch is the worst thing you can do is because while a good bilge and flex can outbucket the water, even when the entire left or right side of the boat is filled with holes, it doesn't matter how good you are. If your entire bottom deck is filled with holes, you will not be able to outbucket it. And if you put yourself in a pinch where you're actively being shot from both sides, then all your bottom deck holes will open up and you will sink. So if you ever find yourself helming, either in a scrimmage like this or in regular adventure mode, the worst thing you can do is put yourself in a pinch. Now that I've explained why staying in a pinch is a terrible decision, let me show you how to avoid one. There are two main ways of avoiding a pinch. Staying full raised and parking your boat far away from everyone else so that you're able to avoid all the ships and not accidentally drive into a pinch. Or you can do what I do and triple sail around the whole map, going fast enough that you aren't able to get pinched because you're moving so quickly that they can't get to you fast enough in order to pinch you. Now the question, how do I decide when I should stay full raised and when I should be triple sailing? The answer is based solely on your experience as a helm. Long story short, staying full raised and not moving is a much safer and easier strategy to implement than triple sailing around the entire map and barely avoiding pinches. However, if you want to get more experience as a helm and honestly have more fun because you're constantly getting yourself into fights, then you should be more aggressive. Here's an example of what I mean by being aggressive and barely avoiding pinches. We full raised in order to try and sink blue who nosed us. However, in doing so, we ended up nosing purple and putting ourselves in a pinch between both blue and purple. However, the moment we wrapped behind blue, I lowered back, front, and mid sail in order to quickly go away from purple to avoid their broad, as well as chase after blue so we could catch up to them before they ran away. Now, even though purple was shooting us and we're still in a pinch, purple was a decent distance away that they were ever so slightly out of effective range. Knowing the effective ranges and how close someone needs to be in order to shoot bottom decks is an important skill to have with being aggressive. Now if I had stayed in that situation, that would have been a bad call. But since I dropped all sails and triple sailed away from purple, even though they got a few hits on us, they only hit one or two lowers because they were so far away and out of an effective range. Specifically for galleons, really the only thing that matters is lower deck pressure. 
It doesn't matter if you have everyone shooting top decks. A good crew will dodge the cannonballs and be back on the cannons within 2 seconds. But if you're hitting a bunch of lowers, it'll force the builders to be down below deck for at least 30 seconds. And if you hit enough lowers, it'll also force flex to be down so they can help the bilge bucket. Effectively forcing two people off the cannons simply because you decided to shoot lower decks instead of top decks. This is why getting close to another ship is the most important thing you can do in order to sink a galleon. Lots of teams will shoot max range shots, and they'll hit some of them, but because they're only hitting one lower deck every 7 seconds, the other ship is in no danger of sinking. This is why in competitive environments, and even just regular adventure, it's important that you eventually close the distance in order to sink another galleon. This is the flaw that a lot of people run into, especially for these competitive leagues. People will complain that someone is always turning off of a fight, but that same team who's complaining only has one sail down, and isn't even attempting to close the distance. In order to sink someone, you need to win the broad by having some people hit lower decks, and some people hit top decks, and you need to be close enough in order to secure the sink and prevent them from running away. This is what makes a good helm. If you only do the first part by winning the broad, but you constantly let the other crews just turn off and escape because you didn't want to send a triple board or drop all sails in order to close the distance, then you're just wasting cannonballs and resources. This ties into another point that's important to remember if you're ever playing a tournament or scrimmage like these, and that's to manage your resources properly. Specifically in Legacy Brawl Hub, they give each ship nearly 800 cannonballs to sink everyone with. If you're constantly being aggressive, taking fights, and using your cannonballs, but you don't secure the sink and you let them escape by running away, then you'll quickly run out of cannonballs. This is why it's imperative as a helm to ensure that you aren't just wasting cannonballs, and you make sure that every fight you take is worth it. If another team is really far away, tell your team to not shoot these. Even if your crewmates do manage to hit every single cannonball they send, it won't matter, because the other ship is so far away that you aren't close enough to capitalize. Since you can't send borders or chain shots because they're so far away, you just wasted 40 cannonballs for nothing. Make sure that if you do decide to take a broad, you tell your team which side to shoot and always try to close the distance on the other ship when you're winning. That way when the other ship decides to peel off, you'll be close enough to send borders or to shoot chain shots. Now that was a lot of words, so let me simplify it real quick. When you're fighting multiple ships, your entire job as a helm is to not get in a pinch. Do whatever you have to do, just don't go in a pinch. And make sure that you capitalize on every fight you take. Don't stay at max range taking pop shots for no reason. Move closer and make sure that you're in an effective range to send borders and chain shots to prevent the other crew from running away. It's the most common mistake I see these teams making. They'll win the broad, but they're too far away to capitalize on it. So the other team just turns off and escapes from the danger. So make sure that you get as close as possible whenever you're fighting them. If the other crew is fully raised, then drop front and back sail in order to have enough speed to inch closer to them. Some people have this idea in their head where they need to match the same speed as the other crew. If the other ship has one sail down, then they need to match it and also have one sail dropped. If the other crew is double sailing, then they also need to double sail. But this isn't always a very good strategy. The whole reason why this idea came about is because when you match speed with someone else, it makes it slightly easier to shoot cannons. You don't need to lead your shots since you're going the same speed and you can just shoot directly at the other ship and it'll hit. But a decent cannoneer can lead their shots ever so slightly. It's not that difficult. So get that idea out of your head that you are required to be moving the same speed as the other crew, and instead, drop your sails to go slightly faster than them so you can close the distance and get closer. Another tip that isn't talked about too often is making sure that you always raise or turn sails opposite side of the broad. If the fighting is happening to your right and you start raising the sail from the right, you won't be able to see what's going on you'll have a much higher chance of getting one balled since you can't see the shot. Make sure that if the fight is happening on your right, that you take left side sails and vice versa, so that you can see any incoming cannonballs and dodge them with ease. It takes the same amount of time whether you go left or right, so go the direction that keeps you the safest. Now I've talked a lot about helming and the importance of keeping angle and not going into pinches. However, you also need to remember to hop on cannons whenever you have downtime. So many helms will be locked to the wheel and won't hop down to help their team on cannons. Having that extra person on cannons is an insane advantage to have, so make sure you're doing it whenever you get the chance. Here's the hierarchy of what you should be doing whenever you're helming. First and foremost, don't go into a pinch that you can't get out of. This is always rule number one and trumps any other responsibility or priority that you have as a helm. Secondly, keep an angle on the other crew. You should never let the other crew shoot you with cannons without you also having the ability to fire back. Thirdly, close the distance on the other crews. If you're taking max range shots and you're not double or triple sailing in order to get closer to the other ship, then you might as well just not shoot these. Get closer. And finally, make sure that you're on cannons as much as possible. Don't be a wheel bot that calls out, I need pressure up here guys, if you aren't going to help your team on the cannons. Now normally I'd end the video right here. I talked about all the main things that make a good helm and tips and strategies for different situations. 
However, I know that when I create my tutorial videos, I'm very general with my teachings. I try not to be too specific and to not give you tips that only apply to a very specific set of circumstances. However, I want my four part series of the different roles to be as full of techniques and strategies as possible, leaving no stone unturned. So I've gone into my Discord and I asked everyone if there were any questions they had that I could answer in this video. If you'd like to have your question answered in the next video, then join the Discord. Anyways, one thing that got asked a couple times was, as a helm, how do you catch up and chase down ships who are intent on running away and don't want to fight you? The short answer is to stop them from running away in the first place. 99% of the time, you will always have at least one chance to immobilize them before they run away. They'll be parked at an island, you start shooting cannons, then they drop sail and never look back. You need to send chain shots and boarders the moment they turn off and run away. The only reason that your cannoneers are on your boat is to shoot cannons. But if the other crew is running away, send them off for a board. Worst case scenario, they miss and have to mermaid back. But since the other ship is running away, you're not in any danger, so it's okay if they miss. Here's an example of what I mean. Now this was a scrimmage and isn't regular adventure where they can run away for 26 squares. It's locked to a 3x3 grid. But the same strategies still apply. The ship started turning off and I realized they were about to get away. So rather than chase them, I just sent a triple board to anchor them and lock them down. If this were adventure, then I would have turned towards them and continued the cannon pressure. However, since this was a scrimmage with lots of good players and teams, I turned off to avoid the other ship closing in on my position. But the strategy still remains. If a ship is turning off and running away, don't let them escape. If you're too far away to shoot chain shots, then send everyone to go for a board and anchor them. Now once they have escaped and are intent on sailing against wind and running away, there's not much you can really do. Eventually you'll reach the edge of the map, and if they don't just red see the loot, then they'll have to turn in order to avoid the out of bounds. That's when you'll have your chance to cut them off and try to chain shot or board them. But like I said before, when they start turning off to run away, don't let them escape. Send everyone over to board to try and anchor them, or call out for your teammates to use chain shots to get them demasted. And if you have the option, just ram them to secure the anchor. Another question was, how do you open a fight? The only real piece of advice that I can give you besides just win the broad lull is to not let the other team have first broad from close range. It's a pretty common mistake that a helm will nose a ship and let them shoot about 8 to 20 cannonballs before they've even shot one. So before the fighting has even started, they're already taking lower decks, masts are breaking, players are taking damage, and by the time you finally turn the boat enough to where you have angle to shoot back, you have so much pressure that you can't do enough to retake the broad. So when you're close to mid-range, never give the other ship first broad. Make sure that you have first broad, or at the very least, you can both shoot each other at the same time. Now if you're at max range, you can nose them for a little bit in order to get a bit closer. Since you're really far away, it doesn't really matter that they have first broad. Just make sure that you don't nose them for too long and you'll be fine. How do I fight multiple ships? Short answer, you don't. Break the fighting up into two 1v1s. Keep sailing until one ship is on your left and another on your right. Then keep your sails fully dropped and break either hard left or hard right. Keeping your sails fully dropped will speed you away from one of the ships and you'll start charging towards the other one. If you're in a tournament style last ship standing, then try to keep the ship you're fighting in between you and the third ship. That way they'll be the ones in the middle and they'll get pinched instead of you. However, if this is adventure and they're in an alliance, then hopefully you can just quickly crush the first ship, send a triple board to finish the job, then you as a helm just turn out and steer your boat to safety while your teammates secure the sink. If they can't secure the sink, then just keep doing it until it works. But above all else, don't fight the 1v2. Split it up into two 1v1s. How do you close the distance on another ship? It's simple really. Just move faster than they are. Here's an example of what I mean. I wanted to get closer to this galleon because taking long range broads are boring and are pretty useless. So I cranked the wheel hard left and triple sailed in towards them to get closer. After we were finally at a mid range broad, I raised mid in order to slow down just a little bit but still keeping front and back down in order to move slightly faster than them so I could keep getting closer. In case you forgot how cannonballs behaved, they follow the momentum of the ship. So if your ship is triple sailing and zooming across the map and you fire a cannonball down here, by the time the cannonball gets to about mid range, it'll be way up here. Because of this, I'm able to crank the wheel hard left in order to get closer while easily maintaining angle to shoot them. And since most teams like to play either full raised or with only one sail lowered, it makes it incredibly easy to catch up to them and close the distance. Another thing about double or triple sailing is the momentum you accumulate. If at any point in time we start taking a lot of pressure that I want to peel off and run away from the situation, I already have so much momentum from double or triple sailing that I can immediately escape from the fight. And since the opponent is full raised, even if they drop all their sails in order to try and catch up to me, it takes a galleon way too much time to reach top speed. So by the time they finally reach top speed, we're already a full square away and are out of danger. 
And on the flip side, if the enemy crew tries to drop sails and run away, since I already have so much more momentum than they do, I can beat them on pace and stay close to them for much longer than if I was just full raised. Another thing that being aggressive does is it allows you to take the fight on your terms. In 5 boat last ship standing scrimmages and tournaments, people are usually way more reserved and they don't want to be super aggressive and risk sinking early. However, if you have a good crew captained by a helm that knows how to avoid pinches and play aggressive, then you triple sailing towards everyone while they're all standing still allows you to take the fight when you want to. And you can actually be safer in some situations rather than sitting full raised and waiting for someone to come to you. Now I'm not saying that you should never be full raised, as being full raised does allow you to spin tighter and also gives you the ability to instantly catch mass when they snap. And along with being much easier to manage, since you don't have to worry about accidentally driving into a pinch or out of bounds, it is 100% easier to play defensively by staying full raised rather than playing offensively and triple sailing. However, being more aggressive by double and triple sailing, if done correctly, is the best way to close the distance so that you can secure the sink more often, while also enabling you to more easily leave a situation when you so choose. Knowing how to effectively be aggressive is most definitely a strategy that you need to master in order to become a great helm. Too many helms play way too passive and are scared to drop mid-sail or be aggressive, so they have to rely on other boats to third party to help them sink someone because they aren't close enough to secure the sink themselves. Knowing when and how to be aggressive rather than passive is an insane skill to have. It opens so many more opportunities for you as a helm than if you were to just sit on the outskirts of the map and only go for third parties. How do you decide when you should catch masts or just leave them to drop? On a brigantine and galleon, you should have as many masts fully raised as possible, so that when they eventually do go down, it only takes 2 seconds to catch it, rather than a full 10 to 15 seconds if it was fully lowered. Now if a fully dropped sail is falling, then it'll take you 10 to 15 seconds to raise it. If you're in an intense situation where those 10 to 15 seconds of no cannon pressure could lose you the game, then just let it go down. But like I said before, it's easier if you just keep the sails fully raised so it only takes 2 seconds to catch it. And like I've explained before, one of your jobs as a helm is to make your teammates lives as easy as possible. So when mid or back mast is falling, unless you absolutely have to turn the wheel, it's better if you go catch the mast rather than forcing one of your teammates off the cannons to go catch it. The reason why it's better to just have Helm catch mid or back mast on a galleon is because since Helm has a nice overview of the ship, they can instantly tell when the masts are falling, so they can get to the mast quicker than their teammates can. And since back mast is so far away from Flex's cannon compared to the wheel, it's better to have Helm catch back rather than have Flex have to walk 5 seconds just to get to the mast. Long story short, catch the falling mast if you can, but if you're going to lose the game because of it, then don't. However, if you keep your sails fully raised, then you won't have to worry about it in the first place. And it's normally Helm's job to tell the team when to catch masts. If the Helm sees there's another ship rolling up, then they can tell the crew to catch the mast. However, for the most part, if you're actively in a broad with someone and you're pretty close to each other, it's better just to let the mast fall and keep up the cannon pressure. When I'm next to an island, sometimes I have trouble repositioning my ship and keep an angle. How do I fix this? Just park slightly further away from the island, so you have plenty of room to maneuver. You'll still have calm waves a couple yards offshore, so just make sure that you have room to do a full 360 degree turn and you'll be fine. When do you raise sails? And which sails should you raise? On a galleon, you usually want to have mid and front sail raised at the beginning of a fight. This will allow you to make tight turns, then you can lower the sails if you need to chase someone down. It takes a while to raise a sail, and only a second to drop it, so keep your sails raised whenever a fight starts. If you're on a brigantine, then you can decide which sail you want down. There are pros and cons for having either front or back sail dropped, but for me, I keep front sail half dropped and back sail fully raised. And of course, this isn't true for all situations. As long as you can keep angle, you can have as many sails dropped or raised as you want. However, the more sails that you have raised, the easier shots your cannoneers will have, and the faster it'll be to catch masts. How do you get the perfect spiral going, and when should you start the spiral? There's no way to get the perfect spiral. Randomly catching wind, getting demasted, waves, blunder bombs, all of these things will affect your spiral and you'll constantly be needing to fix your spin in order to keep angle. However, one thing that'll make your spiral easier is to not full sail when spiraling. If you catch wind with your sails mostly raised, it won't affect the spiral too much. But if everything is fully dropped, then you'll go flying out of the spiral. Now onto when should you be spiraling. I made a video labeled, The Death Spiral is Overrated, where I explain the cons of the death spiral, and why it isn't always a good strategy to use. The main con being, what you're essentially doing is going from a spot where the other ship is unable to shoot cannons, one ball, blunder bomb, chain shot, and curse ball you to a spot where they can now do that. A good crew will just wait below deck to avoid being killed, and once you're in range, pop up and start putting pressure on you to win the broad. So as long as you can prevent the other crew from capitalizing on their broadside when you give them angle, then you can use the death spiral all you want. But if you're a sloop fighting a good galleon crew, 
then you better be ready with a peace ball in order to stop them from just quad cannoning you the moment they have an angle to shoot you. How do I keep an angle on the enemy and prevent them from keeping an angle on me? Long story short, you can't. A good helm won't lose angle. You have to force them to lose it. You can do this by trying to blunder bomb the front of their ship in order to nose them into you, which causes them to lose angle. Or, the other way to force someone to lose angle is to break their wheel, then full drop or full raise in order to make them lose angle before they're able to repair the wheel and turn it. That's the only naval way to make the other crew lose angle. Obviously if you anchor them then it'll be easy, but a good crew won't just let you drop their anchor. The only other way that could work is by one balling the helm, but a good crew will just revive them, or the Vux will take the wheel and keep angle. How do I utilize an anchor turn effectively? You'd mostly use it in order to escape from an unfavorable situation. You're about to get pinched in between two ships, or you're about to nose the ship, so you just do a quick 180 degree turn in order to escape. And there are also 90 degree anchor turns, which you would mostly only use when you're on a galleon and you can't turn as quickly as a sloop can. So you just crank the wheel halfway and drop the anchor whenever you don't want to fully escape from the fight by doing a 180, but you just don't want to fully know somebody. What do you do when the other team is spamming blunder bombs? Simple. Just turtle down below deck and wait for them to stop. Drink some water, take a nap, just don't get knocked off or killed. Then, when they go to reball or they swap to cannonballs, then you can go back to your cannons and start blunder bombing them. How do I keep a bigger boat from closing the distance and catching up to me? If a galleon wants to ram you, you can't really stop them as a sloop. You can either turn and start shooting chain shots, curse balls, and cannonballs to try and one ball them before they get too close, or you can just turn and run against wind once you see they're getting too close. But sometimes you can't escape. They're a bigger ship, and if they catch wind and decide to ram you, there's no turning off. So hopefully you have an anger ball or something. How do you turn off from a fight when you're losing? One thing to remember whenever you turn off is that the moment they see you turn off, they're going to send chain shots and borders, so you need to be ready to double catch sails the moment they fall, repair, and immediately drop it again, as well as watching the ladders and deck lands. So be sure that your team is ready top deck to guard the borders and chain shots, but if everyone is down below deck, you're probably going to lose. How do I approach ships when there's a kraken? If you're in the kraken, then you need to kill it. It only takes 2 to 4 shots to despawn the kraken when you're a sloop, and it scales up based on your ship size. But trying to sail out of the Kraken, as you're constantly getting slammed, wrapped, and you have to constantly watch ladders for borders, is not a possibility. Kill it and be done with it. Now if the other crew is in the Kraken, just park your boat right outside the Kraken Inc. and send everyone over to board them. You don't even have to get on their boat. Just by sitting in the water, you're preventing them from killing the Kraken, turning the wheel, and repairing the boat since they have to watch ladders. Eventually you have your chance to board and you can easily win. How do you deal with someone using the ram strat? Like I explained above, if a galleon is trying to ramstrat you when you're on a sloop, there's not much you can really do short of using an anger ball. But other than that specific matchup, just shoot chain shots and break their mast, shoot wheel to kill the helm, and try to one ball them as they're standing on the bowsprit. The ram strat is not a good strategy, as much as I wish it was, and will only work if you have full wind as a galleon who's ramming a sloop that doesn't have an anchor ball or rigging ball. If you ramstrat somebody, you're going to lose, because you'll get chain shotted, boarded, have tons of lowers, and you'll probably get one balled. It's not a good strategy. Don't try it. How do I know whether or not my cannoneers have angle? The only thing that I know of that's an actual physical object that you can look at in order to tell if you have angle or not is a little button on the galleon. As long as the enemy's boat is right in the middle of this button, then you have an angle to shoot them. And I'm sure there are little markers you can use on the Super Brigantine, but if you don't have a feel for it yet, just look at your cannoneer. If they have their cannon cranked all the way to the right or left, then the angle is tight. You should open it up to give them more room to shoot with. How do I pressure a ship to fight where I want them to fight? Now you can only do this against a ship that wants to fight you. If a ship is hell-bent on running away, then you can't force them to fight at a specific spot because they're running. So you can only do this against a ship that actively wants to sink you. Anyways, assuming they want to fight you, you could always sail near a ford and jump off to use the fort cannons. But a good crew already knows about this and they'll just sail far around the fort to avoid getting shot. The other way you could do this is sail near an island or rock so they aren't able to turn right or left or else they'll hit that rock. This will force them to go in a certain direction and you might be able to get first broad because they're unable to turn. Those are all the questions I had from my Discord about helming. I hope that this video was helpful and taught you something that you might not have thought of before. Hopefully I was able to explain most of the little details and nuances that make you a good helm, and I know that there were a lot of stuff that I forgot to include. And if you can think of anything that you'd like me to explain, then post it in the comments and I'll be sure to respond to it. I try to be really broad with my videos, as it allows for it to be more applicable to situations than if I just explain one super specific thing that only applies to one situation. But hopefully this was still useful. Again, leave any questions you have down below in the comments, and I'll gladly answer them, as I know this video is not as in-depth as I'd like it to be. The next three videos will be based on either build, flex, or main cannon. Join my Discord, so you can vote on the poll in which role you'd like me to cover next. And if you have any more helming questions, you can put them in the helming questions channel on my Discord, and I'll be sure to respond to it. Anyways, good luck.